Hey YouTube friends, what's going on? Uh, welcome to another Dan Food Forest video. You know, if you're new to the video, welcome. And I hope you, you know, come back to watch a lot more. The videos are, you could go in the playlist and check out the other videos that I've done, you know, for a long time. I've probably been on YouTube for five years, you know. So there's a lot of videos. I think I have like 600 videos. So you could go check them out and see what you like. All right, well, in today's video, we're just gonna do a quick tour of the food forest. Today is November 1st. It is actually one, one o'clock, Wednesday, November 1st. You know, so we'll just walk around and let you guys see what, what the food forest is looking like in November in Zone 9B, Central Florida. All right, let's go check it out. The start over here you know we just harvested this this morning you know we this is like the fifth harvest uh, uh roselle you know both the white and the red you know so you know i kind of you know i left these to get a little bit like big and plump because uh, i want to save the seeds you know well mature should get some nice viable seeds from from these calices you know so that was one of the things we accomplished this morning is you know is making another one more harvest and i think we we probably gonna even have the opportunity to harvest maybe two more times you know so that's you know that's what the, the rosal is very productive if you just harvest it the right way you're gonna end up you know oh, these are new ones coming up you know the temperature today here in central florida is like 79 78 79 degrees so beautiful weather you know perfect for my leafy greens garden to to, to start put on some beautiful growth let's go over there all right so this is my my garden bed you know with the the fall leafy greens you know all different kind of stuff is here from kohlrabi to to collards to mustard to all the friend stuff i just mix a bunch of seed and just broadcast everything <laughs> in yeah there's even some volunteer tomatoes popping these green onions here and over there we have green onions again you know and we have some i need to harvest this root crop right here i forget let me see sweet sweet corn root i think that's the name of it you know yeah, I think that's okay. Let, let's look at the. Let's, let's walk around here. Let's see. Oh, the, then we, this is mulling. You know, I actually use the mulling to. You know, like I, I, you know, I know there's a lot of medicinal use for it, but the leaves get so big, so I actually use it for you know make a liquid fertilizer and put back around the plants. But I think this is sweet corn three corn root i think that's the name of it yep you know so you know i need, i'm probably gonna harvest these you remember when i planted these in the garden bed you know just to see because we planted them in a different location last year so we tried something new by planting it in the bed and let's see the result we get from it this year yeah yep so the leafy greens here are kind of dense but it's going to be real tarred into actually you know to, 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 to you know to kind of thin these out i probably do go and get out a little grass see all those grass stuff there yeah yep so but the bed is looking good yeah yeah this bed was you know i added chicken compost each chicken compost it was like almost a, a year old chicken compost you know and i spread it in so the bed is fuller you know you know the right nutrients for the leafy greens hey we got some tomatoes here that we need to actually up pot in uh you know bigger containers but we also need to let's see go over here we also need to actually revitalize this soil you know that could actually use it for the tomatoes so what i'm going to do is use some 
rabbit manure. Yeah, and we're gonna come back to that. Maybe in this video, maybe not. All right, but let's 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 finish up the tour. All right, so one thing we have here is a curry leaf plant. We have uh, like four of these, all from seed, and that's actually putting out a lot of seeds. You know, I think these turn into flower and some little berries. You know, I don't know if the berries are edible. If you guys know, just let me know. But I think it, it's, I think so. I think it's edible. But the curry leaf, mm, smell amazing. You could just add this to different meat, soup, rice for flavoring. You know, even teas. Very medicinal. Yep. Let's look at my Rolinia. This is a Rolinia from seed. You know, and it is doing amazing. Putting on a lot of beautiful growth. Yep, I can't wait for, for when we actually can harvest fruit from, from the Rolinia. Yep, and right below the Rolinia, we have some turmeric here growing. And some shampoo ginger here. Also, we have a strawberry guava tree right here. Put on a lot of bloom, but I haven't gotten a fruit from it yet. You know, it's like a two-year-old tree. So, two, two-and-a-half-year-old tree. So I'm being patient with it eventually. I'm probably gonna get a ton of fruits. And over here, we have more bananas popping up. We have a katuk. The katuk put on this year is like the year of the katuk in the, in the food forest. Kut, they put on so much growth this year for some reason. You know, this is the first time I've seen all the katuk in the food forest has put on massive amount of growth. Yeah, which is kind of cool too. Yep, so let's, let's walk over here. Yeah, bananas are popping up. Suckers, different, different places. We have a coffee here that got knocked back. Arabica coffee that got knocked back last year from the coal. So let's step over here and look at it. Let me zoom back down. Yeah, this is a coffee here, so. It's, it's bouncing back this year. At one point, I thought it was dead. Yeah, look right here. See this? And it pushed back right down from the root. So hopefully, no freezes. Look at this avocado here, guys. <laughs> it's a seedling from compost. See? Okay, guys, easy. These are just, I just throw these over in the garden and they grow. No special skill to grow avocado from seed. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, I don't need that. So. All right, let's, let's go over here more, better look. Oh, we have, look, we have a Monstera Dissiliosa over in this corner. Right here, we have more shampoo ginger. You know, we have shampoo ginger through and through the food forest. All right, let's get up. Let's step out of here. Oh, let me just show you guys something else. Th this is what I do with a lot of containers. Now the empty containers that I have, I get cuttings and I stuck them in. This is the hot plum. Look at it, guys. Nothing special. Just stuck it in a container. It become it just start growing. Shaded area. So if you ever have, if you if you have the hot plum. You know, just stuck them in containers, guys, and you're gonna, they're gonna grow. Once it's in a shaded area, you don't need to water it or nothing. Just leave it there and it's gonna just grow. All right, let's look at my, another Rolina right here, which is just growing so tall. Guys, look how tall it is right now. Good. And these Rolina, look at the trunk from seed. Yep. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful tree. So there's a banana here that I'm going to probably harvest probably another month. You know, we're going to be able to harvest this. And the Rolina are going to have more space to so go right up. Yep. Then yep. we have some. This is the. What, let's see what variety this I think this is. Oh, this is a Kerry. The Kerry star fruit. Yeah, just putting on back growth from last year after being knocked back by the coal. Yeah. All right. Then we have a sour sap. 
here also looking good yeah I use the leaves for tea you know the leaves is packed with medicinal benefits yeah and then in between that we have a pomegranate I think this is a wonderful pomegranate I know pomegranate will really do well in Florida you know or this variety but let's see you know how, how it works out and then over here we have a let's, let's back off here sugar apple sugar apple put on amazing growth in the past two months for once we got that rainy season the tree a lot of the trees just put on amazing growth which I'm happy for yeah yep so they're going in that mature stage now you know let's let's, let's back off here then the beautiful trees right here guys with a June plum from seed still haven't fruited yet it's like going three years three years from seed no fruit yet but it put on a lot of new growth from the during the rainy season yep then we have a Suriname cherry here yep and then we have another it's a dwarf Hawaiian star fruit on over on this side so it's kind of look look this is my walk my passage that I walk through so you have a Suriname cherry here looking beautiful yeah the cherry the no the, yeah this is the dwarf Hawaiian star fruit just in this location and look at the June plum yeah I'll show you how close these trees are and they are all just growing amazingly. There's nothing competing with nothing. They might be competing for height to see who could get tall, be the tallest tree in the year, which is kind of good. I mean, we get a lot of growth from them. But as for per one tree affecting the other, no way at all. You know, I think that's one of the biggest myths we create or somebody created that about trees compete for new trends against trees none of that is happening right here guys you know look look at this big tree right here yeah this is a june plum that's let me show you the june plum this is a june plum right here and right across from it is a sugar apple and look how healthy the sugar apple looks big healthy sugar apple right here <laughs> and then look right below let me back off I know everything is dense so I gotta step back and give you guys better view so let me show you look sugar apple right here June plum right here look look right on this this bush right here is the Suriname cherry then on this side we have a cherry yeah no dwarf Hawaiian so nothing is competing right here. They they're just growing. All right, all right. Let's let's walk over and show you some more stuff. Yeah, the hose right here is what I use to water. In the morning, I water the leafy greens, and I also use a hose to wash out the the duck cage and change the water as well. All right, look at this again, guys. This is another seedling. Not even a, a full year old yet. Yeah. It's a seedling sour sap and all I did guys was to water this non-stop because it was so close to the, the, the garden bed I just just sometimes just leave the water and it put on a massive amount of growth you know the trees in the back I do nothing with watering but like this tree that we're here I'm showing the trees that actually get water and it put on a massive amount of growth yep all right let's walk down here we have another sugar apple I just harvested a sugar apple yesterday, the last one, the red sugar apple. Yeah, and this is put on nice, the, nice size, and it put on like, some new growth during the rainy season. And then our mango. This is our Kerry mango tree right here. And that is also doing amazing, put on a lot of new growth as well. Yep, so we're hoping for a good winter, you yeah, know, no hard freezes, and I think we'll have an extremely productive, you know, spring. Um, right beside the manga, guys, I planted a seedling sugar apple. 
with a tiny little seed in and look at the size of this. It's like about three feet in height now. You know, and I find another one very close, right? Every, everything is right beside this big papaya. And look. So one thing you're gonna notice in my food forest, everything is planted densely, dense. But for some reason, everything still grows. <laughs> yep, which I'm extremely happy about. Everything that's put on a lot of growth. All right, let's, oh, let me show you something else. Then we have another sugar apple right here on this side and then we have that large passion fruit is that is a granite granite granadilia something like i think that's the name and that that i've taken over the strawberry tree the matinga let me show you if you look up here you see the leaves the bigger leaves right here so the bigger leaves going up 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 yeah it's a little bit windy out here guys so you could just bear with me also yeah all right let's 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 walk down here we have a papaya here we got the aki tree that I put on massive amount of growth again let me back off again and show you aki tree so the aki tree this is the aki tree here right beside it you're gonna see a uh, the what's the name guava and right beside the guava let me let me give you guys a, a, a different look a, a different angle so let's do it right here we have the aki tree here we have guava here and then we have the hog plum <laughs> which all three of these trees are right beside each other and they're just doing amazing yep and then we have another hog plum here look at the height of these stuff guys Everything has put on a massive amount of growth. Let me just give you a view. A different view I probably you haven't seen before. Let me give you another view. <laughs> this if you're walking past my yard in the back, this is what you see. Yep. So we got a guava tree right here. We have a elderberry here putting on a lot of growth too too then are we going to go back then the low quad the seedling low quad is pushing off blooms again which was kind of cool yep and then we have a dragon fruit in you know it's kind of trellis into the hog plum and that's doing amazing also let me give you another view of that also from a different angle yep See that kind of banana there also. So if you walk past my house, this is all what you see. A massive food forest in you know in a small backyard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah guys. Yeah. Yeah. Which also put on a lot of nice growth. Look at the thorns guys. Some serious thorn is on this key apple. When I got this, it was maybe a seedling about this height yep and look at it right now <laughs> it's you know if i was supposed to stretch the this branch up it's about seven feet in height right now and right up against the fence here guys we have a jackfruit which i'm not a big fan of jackfruit anyway you know the, i realize jackfruit like you know, like I'm kind of allergic to it or something. You know, like when I eat it, you know, my throat itch and stuff. But I thought this tree was dead and it came back. So I'm just leaving it, let it, let it grow. You know, maybe two, three years from now, we might get some fruit. All right, let's, let's, let's walk up, show you guys some more stuff. Oh, look, more hog plum cuttings that are stuck in containers and they just grow. Yeah, nothing special about rooting hog plum. But it's very easy. Just cut it, stuck it, and contain it, and it and it grow. All right, let's see. Let's go around here. Let's see. Oh, oh, good. Good guys. This is one more my manga tree. This is a grafted Kerry. You know, I took at the sign from that the the mother tree over here and put it over here. And this year, 
this put on a lot of growth you know <laughs> let me bring it right and show you the graph I did a side graph here yeah and that's it it's growing amazingly yeah <laughs> real happy about the growth of this grafted carry mango let me turn you around here you know this side and show you something else though look at the yam guys this is ube yam yeah this cora a lot of, yeah not potato yam real yam true yam and it took over my moringa it took over the low quad you know so man you know we are kind of regret i planted here you know because it went and took over the trees but i'd say you know what let's see yeah, how we work it, it took over a lot so guys, it, the moringa, everything. I didn't even harvest much moringa leaves from this tree because the yam took it over completely. Yep. And this year, guys, I'll show you my seedling. It's a seedling mango that I left. Normally every year I prune it. It's about four year old now, the seedling. You know, I don't know what, 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 what we're gonna get from it. It's just, you know, I plant a lot of seeds. This was one of those mango trees plant from seed you know so if it don't put up push off in the blooms this year even though it's about five to six years so we're on year four so maybe it won't but i'm probably gonna prune it again and let it do one more growth but that would be done in spring because i want to suppose it's surprising us push a, 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 you know pentacles of fruit uh, you know blossoms you know so i'm just waiting to see what's going to happen with this and let's go through here Let's go through here. Then we have another manga seedling. Right, I put on a lot of growth as well. I think this is a nom, not my. I'm not 100% sure, but I think the leaves do have that look of a nom, not my. Yep, this is a nom, not my seedling. And then we have another curry, curry leaf plant here. We have papaya everywhere. <laughs> yep. We have took growing on this side got bananas up in there let's see we got bananas there all right let's let's walk out this part of this part of the food forest we got a avocado right here you know which which probably is about six feet from six to seven feet from the the carry manga that I grafted yeah but I'm gonna definitely leave this, leave this here, you know, to actually just do its thing. Yep. So, so let's let's walk around and look at some more stuff. Let's go. All right. So let me show you again. Show you another seedling. This is another seedling of sour sap. Yeah. And this is also doing amazing here. I've been picking the leaves and using the, in the tea. Guys, just research sour sap leaves and you're gonna see the medicinal benefits. So many things. You know, some of the things I can't mention on YouTube, cause you know, YouTube quick to censor certain things. So certain things you can't mention, so you just leave that as, it, as is. And then we have a lot of taro here. This taro, guys, see the back have that purplish stuff. I bought this, the, 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 the root from uh, the taro in a, in a rhizome, whatever, in you know, the yam, the taro yam. I bought it from the Latina, you know, Latina supermarket, planted it, and, and I realized a different variety because it had that purplish color here, you know, so, but I know it's edible because it came from the Latina store, you know, yep. And if you see this one, this one doesn't have that purplish color. Yeah. And then up over here, we have a lot of, you know, this is a wine papaya. This papaya is very good. I ate three ripe papaya from this tree and it's one of the best papaya I had so far. Then right here, we have some, you know, cranberry hibiscus. Yep. If you look right here, you know, it's about to start pushing the flowers right beside the cranberry hibiscus because we have one more cranberry hibiscus here we got a barbados cherry in this corner then we have a relinia here again 
not a seedling, Rolinia. Depends if the, we get like a cold snap and you know it damaged the tree, I still have you know more, more trees to grow. Then right here is the peanut butter fruit. And this also put on a massive amount of growth during the, the rainy season, the, you know, which is the past two months. And right over here we have some plantains and then we have chaya, tree spinach, growing here, which I use for chop and drop as well. You know, very good, you know, but you have to cook it really good also. You know. All right, and then let's go over, let's go over here. We have another sugar apple seedling here. This is a red sugar apple. Here and then we have another sour sap on that side. And these are the guava. We have guava still fruiting. You see the guava a million times. So, yeah, let's, let's walk through here. Then, guys, look, look at this again. Let me show you again. So I don't think trees compete as the way the they, you know, people always say, look, my friendly snake in the garden. Always going through and through, just eating lizards and all kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> see that? Let's see. No fear at all. Harmless stuff, guys. Yeah, I know the movies let us get scared of snakes and all that stuff, but nothing to be scared of with the black racer. Yeah. All right. This is a sugar apple that also put on a lot of growth in the last two months. And beside it is a, you know, Nesberry or support, Nesberry or Sapodilla, you know, and this is, all, this is a seedling, which the seedling take a, a couple of years before it would fruit, you know, and this seedling came from, I got the seeds from another seedling plant that my aunt grew in West Palm Beach, you know, and she had amazing fruit from it. And I got the, the fruit, saved the seeds, planted it, and now the trees, this, this tree is now going on, let me tell you how long, oh, oh, you know, what, four years? Yeah, four years, I think this tree is here. Yep. And then over here we have another, a mango tree. I think this is a fear child. Let's see, yeah, this, is it fear child? Yeah, this is a fear child mango. Last year it, it pushed off blooms, but no fruit, you know. Yeah, this year, it's still a very small tree, you know, so I'm just give it, gonna give it time. You know, patience. You know, every year I learn to even be more patient with stuff in the food forest and just focus on other stuff that's producing. You know, and the other stuff will actually just come right up you know, and surprise you. And that's one of the beauty when you get those big surprises you know, in, in, in the food forest. It's something that you didn't expect to start fruiting and it just pop out and give you, you know, a lot of fruits and stuff. Yeah? So, you know, I'm going to end the video here you know, and just want to show you guys what you know, November 1st is looking like in the food forest. You know, still a lot of nice, beautiful growth is going on here. You know, so let, let's hope, keep your finger crossed for us here in Central Florida that we don't get a massive freeze. You know, like what we had last year, which we went on to at 23, 25. You know, the water was frozen in the buckets here. So, you know, it was cold. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so that's it, yeah. Just wanted to bring you guys along and show you what's going on here in my zone nine here, yeah, Central Florida food forest, which 90% of the trees here guys are growing from seed. Yeah, and they all, not all, we'd say like 60% of them are producing right now, yeah, which is amazing. Yeah, all right. So, all right, let me turn the camera around. All right guys, so thank you so much for watching. I'll be blessed with peace, love, and happiness. One love. See you guys in the next video. All right? Good. <laughs>